Hello, everyone. We're going to do a part two on the storehouse history from the apostles to today. Uh, we're going to go over some <clears throat> some furthering of the the path uh, in part one. Uh, if you recall, we went over the first part and we described how the apostles uh, had the very beginning first storehouse, and um, <clears throat> then it transferred over to. Uh, Spirit Prophecy, the um, Seventh-day Adventist Church, after a long period of time. And, uh, and of course, the, the Spirit Prophecy told us that organization was very key to the Lord's working among his people. And so uh, we're going to continue now with this, uh, this part two, and we're going to show further advancement of the storehouse and its movements. So we ask that you... Uh, Stop the video and pray uh, that the Spirit of Truth, uh, John sixteen thirteen, may be claimed and uh, believed in. And of course, the Lord is faithful. Anytime we we claim and uh, promise that He makes in His Word and believe it, it's the key is to believing it, not just to claim it verbally, but to actually believe it in our hearts that uh, He His truth uh, detector, the Spirit of Truth, will guide us into all truth. And so um, <clears throat> let us now uh, begin. So in 1929, uh, the storehouse officially transferred to the Davidian Seventh-day Adventist movement. So it went from the Seventh-day Adventist movement uh, in 1844 to 1929, which it became then the Davidian Seventh-day uh, Adventist movement. Of course, the word Davidian wasn't applied in 1929. It came later on. But um, looking in hindsight, this is the actual transfer uh, into this uh, into this group. Um, and then in Shepherd's Rod, Volume 1, page 251, in 1930, even though it was uh, the transfer uh, became official, the rod at that time, the Davidian Seventh-day Adventist movement, had not... Uh, acknowledged it for the sake of giving the Seventh-day Adventist Church time to accept the new message from the Lord, okay? So it was a, a period right in the very beginning of the message where, as we will read this, it says, in, in case someone's name should be taken off the church books for carrying on the message, do not be discouraged in any way, but press onward as though nothing has happened. Pay your honest tithe and offering to your church, and feel it is your father's house. Continue your work of reform with as many as you possibly, uh, as you can possibly interest. So we see that, <clears throat> despite in 1930 some um, some understandings and some misunderstandings from the mother church, the SDA church, the new message was saying at that time to continue with the original church, the Seventh-day Adventist church, in paying your tithes. In other words, uh, like I mentioned before just a little while ago here, we know that the early period of a new message, the Lord just doesn't cut it off, you know, like that. He gives the new message time to uh, reverberate amongst his people so that they have a chance to come into this new message. Uh, but in 1934, apparently a good three or four years now, the Lord uh, basically had told uh, the messenger, uh, Brother Hadoff, to announce that the time has come for them no longer to regard the Seventh-day Adventist Church as the God's legal storehouse. And we read, the instruction in, in the S. Rod, Shepherd's Rod, Volume 1, page 251, regarding tithe, proves that we have paid our honest part all along, all the way. It says that the tithe should be paid to the old SDA organization. But now, since the leading part of the denomination has rejected the sealing message of the 144,000 and is passing on to the people a cytoref uh, refutation of its subject matter to justify their actions, doing all they can to prevent the people from coming in contact with the message, the action of the shepherd rod in calling not only for the tide, but also for the offerings to be brought in 
for the support of the message of present truth is divinely approved and justified. For present truth has always constituted God's storehouse. And this, this very important announcement can be found in separate, so, uh, Symbolic Code, Volume 1, Number 5, Page 9. And again, this was 1934. So we see a good four years or so after the, uh, the first uh, reference where the, the message at that time, even though it was an embryo stage, it was a beginning stage, still regarded the SDA church as the proper place to return the tithes. But over time, as we read here, the continual fighting and the continual rejection of this message caused uh, the Lord to make an announcement. And again, <clears throat> this is further proof that uh, it has been transferred. The instructions in the Shepherd's Rod, Volume 1, page 251, pay your honest tithe and offering to your church and feel it is your father's house, came near the close of 1930, before the leading brethren as a denomination had rejected the sealing message. Clearly then, the Shepherd's Rod has faithfully discharged its duty in refusing to accept any tithes or offerings until after the books were scattered throughout the denomination and after the brethren began bitterly to oppose the message. Now, though, since the opposition is no longer passive but intensely active and the proclamation of the message supremely urgent, the only course open is apparent. It will take an army of workers, including the tithes and offerings, to reach the people. And this can be found in track four, uh, page uh, 66. So to make it official, uh, the Lord in his rod message uh, on April 15th, 1935, made the following. The Lone Star State, being in the midst of the land for both Americas, North and South, is a place where we must set the camp so that the light may be equally diffused east and west, north and south. Moreover, the camp from where the battering rams are to be sent naturally must be centrally located so that the distance between the rams and the camp may be cut down to one half, thus reducing the time and the cost for transportation and supplies as well as for mailing, we thank God for such a wise plan as this. Therefore, he has given us one of his beautiful lakeside hills adjacent to Waco, Texas, a city of about 60,000, yet far enough from it to be away from the world and its evil environment, about five miles from the center of the city and about two and a half miles from the city limits. There lies 189 acres of land for our camp. And again, this important announcement <clears throat> can be found in separate, uh, Symbolic Code, Volume 1, Number 10, Page 1. So, once we know that the Lord made the announcement that he has a new location for his storehouse, this message, which is the, the, the present truth, uh, has something to say about the subject matter, and that is, the tides being returned to the storehouse. So let's look at some important uh, injunctions that the message gives us. Number one, no one has the right to make his home, apartment, flat, studio, mansion, or wherever else he lives for the purpose of being the storehouse and collect, keep the Lord's tides to be to use at his own discretion. And of course, that proof is found in Answer, Volume 4, Question 97. Now, we want to make something clear here. We shouldn't be confused on this first uh, injunction. And that is that, for example, we personally have several ministries. Uh, one of them is Facebook called Truth Tellers. Uh, another of them we, we base out of our home. And uh, we um, put together what's called Present Truth Packages. And uh, so we do have, in a sense, a storehouse. However, did you notice the connection? Storehouse and 
collect and keep the Lord's tithes. We can't do the both together. This is what is forbidden in the answer of volume four, question 97. So let's keep that in mind. It's one thing to have a storehouse and produce the message and send it around to all the world, as many as you can reach. That's one thing. But at that time, to call yourself a legitimate tithe collecting storehouse is crossing the line. So let's keep that in mind. And of course, we have a note here. It has been alleged by some that question 97 gives proof that one can have their own home, the storehouse, and collect tithes because they base this on the reasoning that some early post-knockout blow storehouse locations in California were from private homes, completely twisting the whole intent of question 97. The whole point of question 97 is not talking of property structures as it is about those who falsely strike out on their own collecting tides and then the, and then of course in 97 uh, question 97 it has the following seriously handicapping the lord's work bleeding and subverting his treasury and thus disorganizing his work and reducing the church to a mere shell while her members are hiring themselves as laborers in the lord's vineyard helping themselves to the lord's money and running without being sent what a Babylon that would be. So we see that in question 97, uh, the, the Lord uh, s clearly and beyond doubt tells us that uh, no matter what justification we try to say, it's not up to us to make our own home the storehouse. It's not up to us to make our own work worthy of being a, a tithe collecting storehouse. So let's keep that in mind. This is a very, very important uh, number one injunction. Okay, number two. Uh, in the message that came um, from Waco, Texas, the Rod message, we have to understand that uh, if we disagree with how the true storehouse of God is working, we are not to abandon it. Rather, know that if God himself allows it, then all we can do is let the authorities know our complaint and the rest is in our as out of our hands. We have done our duty. Now, if they continue to make errors as we see it, it's on them. God will deal with the responsible parties. And proof of that is found in uh, the very next question, uh, found in answer volume four, which is question 98. So 97 and 98 of this volume of, of the answer really deals head on with this issue. And we would be really uh, taking great counsel to, uh, to uh, obey these injunctions, to follow these, these, these instructions, because, you know, how many of us have heard uh, from videos and from, you know, brethren uh, with reports, oh, you know, Waco's doing this. Mountain Dew deal is doing this. And look at how much abominations over here and over there. And, and they use that as justification to make their own home the storehouse. You see, they've got to have justification. Otherwise, they know that they would be lost. So they have to make a justification and send it out to the brethren that makes it look like they're in the right position. But according to the message we see, after you really do some studies on these particular questions uh, and answers, the seriousness of the, of the, of the issue. Number three. If we are doing much work for the Lord, sending out tracts and other literature, despite this great work, we are not to solicit money for our cause. Those who do this are in direct violation of God's following command. And again, this can be found in Shepherd, I mean, a Symbolic Code, Volume 8, number 1 to 12, page 23. The message invests no one with authority to solicit financial help to carry on either their work or that of the shepherd's rod. So you see how wise and powerful the Lord is with his all-encompassing uh, word here. That in other words, there's no, no way you can make a justification for, for your work to claim that you need financial help, that you need tithes, and you're worthy of that. No, we cannot do that. This is a satanic trick. Okay, and then, uh, of course, the answer, volume 4, page 45, we read, Though the Lord commands, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, Malachi 3.10, he does not say to bring all the offerings. 
Thus, he shows that if we engage in some personal charity or missionary work, we should sustain it from offerings, not from the tithes. And of course, he has the very powerful Testimonies, Volume 1, page 198, quote, Angels keep a fa faithful record on every man's work, and as judgment passes upon the house of God, the sentence of each is recorded by his name. And the angel is commissioned to spare not the unfaithful servants, but to cut them down at the time of slaughter. And the crowns they might have worn, had they been faithful, are put upon the heads of those saved by the faithful ser servants. So this is, again, something that we, we constantly read throughout our message today that we must be faithful in returning his tithes. We cannot fall for any satanic trick, any justifications to keep tithes within our own person, within our own small little group, even though we think it's uh, the right thing to do. Now, one thing I want to bring up right here in this, in this, and this is why we brought it up. It does say that you have somewhat s certain freedoms here to help a brother out or help a certain cause out from the offerings. So if you do have a, a certain situation where you want to help someone, you want to, you know, because you like what they're doing, they're out there working hard, uh, uh, producing the message in certain parts of the field. It looks to be right here from this in injunction, the offerings are allowed for some of that. So let's keep that in mind. Not the tithes, but the offerings. Okay, now let's. Uh, now that we have some basics on tithes, tithes commands, uh, let's look at our second and no less important point, and that is structure. How did our Davidian model, Brother Hodoff's organization, operate as a headquarters? Let's look at that. The foremost book in this regard is the Leviticus Track. There are clear organization structures shown. And of course, in Leviticus page 21, we read, God is a God of order. Everything connected with heaven is in perfect order. Subjection and thorough discipline mark the movements of the angelic host. Success can only attend our order and harmonious action. God requires order and system in his work, now no less than in the days of Israel. All who are working for him are to labor intelligently, not in a careless, haphazard manner. We, we would have his work done with faith and exactness that he may place the seal of his approval upon it. Again, that's found in Patriots and Prophets, page 376, and in the Leviticus, Le Leviticus track, uh, page 21. Okay, so this track lays out our Davidian order, our model, our example. We will briefly touch on the structure. First, there is no president today, as we know, um, because that was the role of the prophet, Brother Hadaf. And, of course, we can find that on page 6 of the Leviticus track. Next, we see that the vice president shall assist the president in administrating the affairs of the association. Again, that's found on page 6. Thus, with the prophet temporarily gone, the vice president is now in charge. There is to be a secretary who keeps proceedings of all the meetings. Also, a treasurer who collects all the funds and pays the bills, distributing money as needed. Of course, that can be found on page 7. It appears that there was a total of seven members on the executive council, including the above positions. And that can be found on Facebook track. I mean, excuse me, uh, fund, um, uh, let's see, fundamental beliefs tr track, page 16. Later evidenced um, by meetings, meeting meetings, uh, February 6, 1955. Uh, so we have a lot, of, a lot of evidence that, there was a council, that's the structure, and that um, we have certain positions that need to be in place in order to have uh, what is the original, uh, true Davidian model. And, uh, of course, it says more. Sessions are to be held at such time and place as the executive.
executive council shall designate by notice in the symbolic code, page 7. Bylaws can be made as long as they do not go against the Constitution. These can be amended, repealed, etc. by such a representation and vote as example, exampled in Acts of Apostles, page 195 and 196. And that's found on page 8 of the Levitic Leviticus tract. Uh, we should note that uh, voting is acceptable form of leadership as uh, Acts of the Apostles, page 195 and 196 shows. But that was voting from within the council, not from the general field membership. Bylaw details are explained on page uh, 9 and 10. So we, we notice that there are certain voting uh, acts that are required and but that's not a vote of the general field membership. In other words, the, the, all the members take vote, part in a vote. It doesn't appear that that is the accepted method of voting. The balance of the track explains the purposes of the organization. It is noted the following. Only as they were uh, united with Christ could the disciples hope to have the complementing uh, uh, power of the Holy Spirit and the cooperation of the angels of heaven. With the help of these divine agencies, they would present before the world a united front and would be victorious in the conflict that they were compelled to wage unceasingly against the powers of darkness. And they should continue to labor unitedly. Heavenly messengers would go before them, opening the way. Hearts would be prepared for the reception of truth. And many would be won to Christ, so long as they remain united. Let me repeat that again. So long as they remain united, the church would go forth. Fair as the moon, clear as the sun, terrible as, honor, honor, uh, as an army with banners. Page 24 of the Leviticus track. Again, this track is emphasizing once more organization and us being united, working together. Not independent atoms uh, answering to no one, doing whatever you think is best. And somehow getting this private invitation one-on-one -on -one with the Lord to just do your own thing. That's a trick, brethren. Be, be aware of tricksters like this. Now, the following uh, final words of this track is made. Now, we want to make point of this, that this is important because this is the final sign-off on this track. And that's page 102, and it reads, The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. But chiefly them that walk after the, the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government. 2 Peter 2, verse 9 and 10. That all things been, be done decently and in order. 1 Corinthians 14, 40. Again, that's found in the final words of the Leviticus track, page 102. Now, we highlighted despise government because, again, we must understand that government is key. Uh, united government working is key to the storehouse, is key to working forward and upward in his work. So anytime you have a video, anytime you have a report, that tries to despise government in any form. In other words, uh, they say, ah, oh, you don't need government. Just work out of your home. Produce the message, and you'll be good to go and collect tithes. Again, we, we must be aware of Satan's wiles. This is a, clearly a, one of his tricks. So let's uh, go over some summary of part two. The storehouse was indeed transferred to the Rod Movement, from the SDA, which later organized at Mount Carmel and gave us the example of the uh, Davidian uh, Association storehouse tied structure, its executive council. Serious warnings were given by the Lord of what not to do in returning tithes. With these building blocks and this clear, unambiguous council, we shall follow the storehouse movement after the great knockout blow prophesied and delivered by Florence Hoddeff 
uh, prophesied by uh, the shepherd's rod, I should say, and it was subsequently this blow was delivered or, or came about by Florence Hoddoff and her crony council in part three. This is where, as they say, the rubber meets the road. We need to zero in on our past history and see how God did not forsake the flock and provide a clear road map to follow. So this is very key, brethren, that we have to understand that contrary to some false brethren who teach that the Lord, after the knockout blow, just threw up his hands and said, you know what, everything's messed up here. Look what Florence Hoffman did. So, you know, I don't know what we're going to do. We're just going to have to break off an independent atoms, and I'm going to kind of just sit in the background and let you guys flounder around. No, brother, this is not true. The Lord had his hand actively involved once that block knockout blow. I would say even more actively involved once that knockout blow came because he knew this was a dire situation. This is the message floundering and in need of his touch, in need of him taking the reins. And he did so. He started first, as we'll explain in part three. I won't go into it because that's obviously something we're going to get into in part three. But just be, just be sure that the Lord did not abandon uh, the work at the knockout blow. And uh, it's important to know this because, like I said, once you know all this, the storehouse history, you'll be that much more fortified to stand up against Satan's tricks today. And those tricks are that there's no storehouse today. There's no organizational work. Uh, Waco, Mountaindale, forget about it. They got too many uh, abominations. Just follow me. Follow my little uh, mom and pop uh, advice and, and do what I'm telling you to do. No, brother, this is false. Be aware of these tricks. So thank you for listening, and um, we shall talk to you very soon in part three. And may the, the Lord continue to guide you into all truth, that great promise of John 16, 13. God bless.